So now, let us make a bouncing ball animation inside of Cinema 4D right here. So to work around with the animation, first of all, I'm going to uh, bring in a spear. So I'm going to bring in a spear right here, and I'm going to work around with the keyframes. You can see that I got 90 frames, but let me just work around with this 20 frames for this animation. So now, let us plan on how the animation works. But before that, let me also bring in uh, something like a plane to be kept at the bottom of the animation just like this. So now, let's start with the animation. So I want the uh, spear right here to actually start from the top, not the plane, but the spear. I want it to start from the top over here. And I need to bounce this. I, I need this the, the spear to be down right around uh, 10 frame of um, 10 around 10 frame. And then I need to go um, let this ball go back up again, up around uh, frame 20. So I need to set that up just like that. So I'm going to go over here on to the front just like this. And you can see that there's the Y axis on to place. So I'm going to uh, select something like 600 centimeter and I'm going to keep the number simple so it's easier for me to remember. And I'm going to set a keyframe right over here. So over here for under 600 centimeters, I'm going to add in a keyframe just like this. And there you go. The keyframe has been set. And now on the 10th frame and so forth, I'm going to drag this down. So I'm just going to uh, drag this down right over here. And I'm going to make sure it is a bit below the center point right over here. So just a bit below so that we can add in squats and stretch later on. So I'm going to say something like 30 right over here, 30 centimeters. So it's a bit below other point. And then I'm going to add in a keyframe right over here as well. Now I want this to be back up around 600 centimeter itself. So 600 press enter and add in a keyframe. And now if you were to play it, you can see that a bouncing ball effect is happening. But wait a minute, it actually starts slow, which is okay, but it actually slows down at the bottom portion as well. So bouncing is not actually happening around, it's accelerating and deaccelerating, meaning it's easing in and easing out, which is not what I want. So I need to go to animate mode to actually fix this out. So I'm going to go out from layout over here. So that's the standard layout as you can see. And now I'm going to go in to animate right over here. So let me just click on animate. And over here right now by default is the dope seat mode. So I'm going to go over here on to uh, my view mode right here. And then I'm going to go on to the F curve mode. And once you go over here, you can see that everything is curved. So it is denoting that the animation starts slowly just like this. It takes an acceleration, it slows down, and then it speeds up again and slows down again. So if I were to play it, you notice the same thing. It's start up slow, it slows down over here, and then it ends right here. So these are the three keyframes that I actually set. And I can accelerate and deaccelerate it. I can make the changes right over here. So starting out slow when actually letting go of the wall is fine. And slowing down when it reaches at the top is also fine. But what I don't want is while it bounces, I don't want it to slow down. So this is where I need to make my adjustment. So you can see these handles right here. If I were to move it, you can see that I can change the curve. Let me just press Ctrl Z. I don't want to change the curve. You can see that the, um, the, the that both the curves are actually related. I want to break them down. So I can simply select this out and then you can click on this icon right here, which breaks the tendons. If you are, are not able to see this or if you actually see this uh, animation graph as small or something, you can hold the two button on your keyboard, the two button. That is the two number key, not on the numlock pad, but on your main keyboard. I hold the left mouse button to actually zoom in. You drag it onto the right, it zooms in. Drag it onto the top or bottom, it zooms up and down. You can hold the middle mouse button to place it wherever you want. So this is how you can actually control this. So you can see now that it is actually disappearing. But once you zoom it in, you can use the middle mouse button to place it where you want. So just like this, you can go around and then zoom around with that exact portion. So this is zero frame to uh, 20 frame as you can see. So let me just zoom this around to see more details as possible. Use the middle mouse button and drag it around just like this. But anyways, let us get back. So if I were to press the play button, you can see that this is what happens. And now I want to change this out. So let me just select this and break the tendons right over here. So if I were to click it, 
Now, both of the tangents right here become independent and you can actually move this individually as you can see. So I want it something like a V curve, just like this, V with a curve. So it starts out slow, just like this. It bounces around over here and gets back up. So if I were to press the play button, you can see now there's a bouncing ball like effect, just like that. There's the bouncing ball like effect and there you go. You can see that now it look, looks much natural. If you wanted to make it look like a cartoon, you can even make it stay longer up in the air by actually pulling this handles out just like that over here. Just pull the handles out and it stays longer in the air. So if you have to press the play button, you can see that it stays longer in the air and actually looks like bouncing off right there. And this looks much more natural as you can see. So now that is there. So now what I want to do is I want to apply squash and stretch. Meaning let's think that this uh, spear is very, very soft. So uh, once you actually, when starting, it squashes a bit. Uh, on the way down, it actually uh, expands. It actually pulls up a bit. Over here, it squashes. Over here, it pulls and back, it squashes. So let's use the squash and stretch theory onto this animation right here. So in order to work with squash and stretch, Let's see, this animation plays well now, plays well. In order to work with squats and stretch, first of all, I'm going to go on to the spear right here, and I'm going to convert this into an editable object by pressing the C button on my keyboard. So I'm then I'm going to go over here onto the spear, I'm going to go over here onto the coordinates, and here are the scale, as you can see. So you can go over here, you can scale it out, but let me just go over here and use these keys right over here. So let me just go around here and add in keyframes to the scale. So I'm going to go over here, uh, not going to work around with auto keyframe right over here. So I'm going to go around and add in scale to all of these just like this. So the scale animation has been added over here onto the zero frames. So over here, I want the Y value. So I, I, I can just uh, click and drag it and you can see that it actually squeezes in a bit. I want the Y value to squeeze. So let's say around 0 0.8. I want it to be squeezed and I want X and Z value to be a bit out because I have to keep volume in mind as well. So I'm going to add in keyframe to all of this. So once that's done, as the spear actually comes down, I want to take it. I want it to take more of a spherical shape. So I'm going to go over here on to one, 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 and it's more of a spear. And I'm going to add in keyframe to this. So as this goes back, as you go over here, you can see that it actually starts out squashed, and then it goes into more of a spherical shape, just like this. And now after that, after it actually goes over here around this section. I want it to actually scale up just like this. So around 1.2 right over here and around 0 0.88. So you don't have to do an exact mathematics calculation like here, but it makes the things more natural. So you have it uh, just like this on the top. You have it really, really squashed out. It actually pulls over as if this is a softball. And over here, I want it to squash. So right over here, uh, it's on this key keyframe. And over here, I want it to really squash out just to the level of this right here. So I can actually uh, go over here and see from this level. So scaling this out over here, once you actually turn it into a, an editable object doesn't work. So you have to work around from this, this section itself. So once you actually go over here, you can see that I can squash this out just like that. Right over here at the bottom, I want it to squash and touch the bottom floor right over here. So that's around 0 0.3, just like that. and. I can have something like 1.7 right over here. So actually make it really, really squashed out. So just like that, I can add in a keyframe. So now you have this sort of an animation. So it actually comes down and squashes. And once it gets back over here, I want it to stay on this position again. So 0 0.8 and 1.2. So on here, I want it to be 0 0.8, 0 0.8 and 1.2 right here. So just like that, I'm gonna add in a keyframe to this. And then right around uh, this section right here. So let's say around uh, this section, I want it to be spherical, just like this, adding keyframes onto this. And finally, over here, I want it to be the same value as this. So uh, 1.2, 0 0.8, and 1.2, just like this. So 1.2 uh, over here, 1.2, and there you go. So once you add in these key three keyframes, that's it. So if I were to play this, you can see that now it actually looks like a bouncing ball animation. So 
You can see that it actually squashes and stretches just like that. On the beginning, you can uh, I feel that it is squashing a way bit too much. So I'm just gonna do it 1.1 right over here and 0 0.9 just like this and 1.1. So just like this, I'm gonna add in these three values right over here. And over here, 1.1, 0 0.9, and 1.1 again. So those three values are there again. So once three values are there, you have to press the play button. You can see that now that's how the squash and stretch actually works out. So once everything is done, I'm going to go back to the standard view right over here. And this is my bouncing ball animation. So you go over here and you can see that this is how it actually works out. So now I'm going to add in, let's say, um, something like a motion blur to it to make it more realistic. So I'm going to go on to uh, render tags. I'm going to add in motion blur to this and let's render out the animation now. So over here, uh, that's it. I have it. Uh, so I actually need to add in vector motion blur over here as well. And I'm going to output all of the frames. So I'm going to output all of the frames and let's see how the animation looks like now. So if I were to render this out, let's press yes it's gonna render out all of the frames right over there. So let me just fast forward there. And there you go. So if I were to play it, you can see that this is my animation right over here, just like this. So there's the bouncing ball animation, just like that. So it squashes and stretches out just like that, as you can see. So that is how you can make a bouncing ball animation inside of Cinema 4D. So hope you guys learned something as always. And as always, please like, comment, share, and subscribe.